Hi, my name is Matt Carroll with World Class Coaching. And today I want to talk to you about a game um, that we call Shooter's Alley uh, at first, but you generally with the name changes as you play the game a little more with your team because there's always one player that ends up having to do this game for the longest amount of time and everyone else is watching them. And we usually just name the game after them, um, you know, whatever their last name is, game. And every player usually knows what we're talking about. Um, I really love this game because it's competitive. Um, it really can build your defense and self-confidence for sure. It teaches your attacking players to be smart with their runs in terms of the angles, but also conserving energy and moving and losing their mark. It allows your midfield players to see the field, um, look for patterns and runs that are going to be more effective than others, um, allows for your goalies to take a lot of shots. Um, it, it definitely, again, has a fitness element to it for both sides and for the defense, a little bit more mental for the attacking side, definitely uh, definitely a more physical um, act, uh, element to it. So what we do is we set up um, a little alley here that all the defenders and all the attackers um, will start in. Uh, we might even start this game off without um, the goal part here. and We may just have this attacking player, uh, midfielder, have a ball in their hand. And they'll try to pass the ball to one of these players in black. Uh, and the idea of being there for a warm-up is just that they're looking to lose their marks. They're looking to create space. They're looking to get open, making these runs and, and within the, um, the the chaos of the channel. So that might be just something to kind of activate the players and get them kind of understanding how to make movement and how to lose their mark. But once we've got that done, um, we have our midfielder here who just has a stack of balls. Um, you can go even strength. You can go more defenders. You can go less defenders. How you know that's going to change the difficulty of it. But you're going to have – Attacking players and defenders in this alley. And then you're going to split the 18 and a half by the PK spot. So we right down the middle. This center back will only cover this part of the pitch. This center back will only cover this part of the pitch in the 18. Uh, they can't leave the 18. They can't go to the other side of the 18. Um, nothing like that. So what it'll start off is we're going to have our attacking players looking to get open. The midfielder can play to their feet. They can play a through ball into space, uh, whatever they think is appropriate. They could play and chip something over the top into the space. Uh, the defenders can poke anything out in, inside the alley. They can head it out if they can stay within the alley. Whatever they need to do, they can knock away a, um, a through ball, but they cannot leave and go into the alley, uh, leave the alley. Only the attacking players can leave the alley. Uh, and only one attacking player at a time. It can get a little crazy if you allow a little more than that. Even if you allow one attacker per box, you know your goalie is then kind of facing multiple shots, and it can get a little uh, hectic. Um, so even you know you have to be aware of what's going on at all ends of the alley because if you go and you think you have the perfect run, and this guy goes now, two guys are in the box, and it's a waste of chance, and you know put all this work and effort, and it doesn't matter. So you have to kind of be aware of what everyone else is doing, but. The key concept is that you're going to play – the midfielders are going to be moving around. They can move anywhere along the line here, do whatever they need to do to get the ball where they need it to be. But they're going to try to play a ball to an attacking player in the alley or through the alley, get them into the box, and get them into a shot. So, for example, this guy jukes, fakes, comes forward. The midfielder recognizes this, slips the ball through. The center back thought maybe – it was going to come from a different attacking area. So he's at a position. He's made a good diagonal run here. Gets on the ball, shoots, and scores. Now you have two options here. The, the player that scores now can become another midfielder and help pass balls. Doesn't need all those cones. Can come and help pass balls. Or they can just be someone that scored and now they're out and they can take a break. Um, so as it, you don't move any defenders. So as this happens, it gets a little, you know, a little more difficult, and then it gets a lot more difficult. So now you have this player scores, and then this player scores, this player scores, and now we're down to two. And then this is where you know you get the naming of the game. You have one player in the box. Let's make him run this way. And now he's going up against all these guys. Now he's he's not having to beat all of them. But he's having going to have to slip their marks, and he's going to have to get way more creative. You know, there's not really going to be too many options where he's going to be able to take the ball on his foot, beat a guy going to the 18 and score because they're all going to slide, 
can be a lot more dangerous. So he's going to have to be a lot more tricky. And at this point, he's been running, making runs, getting denied, everything like that. You know, sometimes up to you know five, ten minutes, just making a ton of runs. He's going to be gassed. So he needs to start being a little bit more economical with his runs, using you know fakes and feints and you know, trying to dummy the defenders. So that when he does make his move, it's not wasted energy. He's not making a sprint into the box for the ball to go away um, and be cleared by a center back. He's making it so it's a smart move, smart run, get into the box, and a clear finish. Um, he can, another rule in here is you can take the ball into the box and switch sides for the other side. This center back cannot follow this center back then needs to slide. So what you're going to have at the end of the game is players here, again, either they're, they're helping to pass the ball and we're getting, you know, having to communicate and you're not, you have five, six guys passing the ball to one guy and you have to figure out who's going to make the pass. And you have, there's a lot of communication elements, a little more chaotic. So it can be a little bit frustrating for players and kind of making them have to find ways and solutions to a really chaotic situation. Um, or you're having uh, basically a one V this back line, um, the midfielder again isn't moving too much and you know isn't having to you know make a move to create space to make the pass, but he is getting better looks of how he can play and slip balls behind this center backs over here because he just cleared a ball. This runner makes a run into here. Midfielder recognizes he can play into the space, and we get into it and we're a one v one with the center back. So again, players are going to be pretty tired. It's a lot of running for these guys, um, but it is helping them identify a ton, a ton of different looks um, that you couldn't even really re uh, recreate in a, in a scrimmage. Just tons and tons of looks of this running through the back line, finding gaps, making you know playing through balls. Um, you have an automatic built-in offsides uh, line, although you do have the center backs behind. Um, and it's just a really, really great game to challenge the creativity of your players. Uh, definitely something you're going to want to use at the end of the game, uh, really hype it up as a fun, um, competitive element of the game, of the, of the session, um, and make sure that, you know, this is the last thing because after this, uh, this guy that's left, last in probably isn't going to be too excited to do any more drills after that. So really fun drill, uh, and I hope you enjoy it.